okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're finally here at a point where uh, we can start looking at uh, some of the public art opportunities for um, the Oak Lodge Library and really for the Concord site. Um, I think today we're gonna more focus on the library because um, we have separate funding you know, for the library and for NCPRD's uh, portion of the project. So, um, Sina, do you have the ability to start your presentation and bring that up? Or do we yeah. wanna, we can go around the room actually and, and introduce ourselves. I think most of you know everybody, but I know um, there's probably one new face that none of you have met yet. So um, I'm Jason Varga, project manager for the Concord Project and the Gladstone Libraries. Um, Sina, you wanna go next? Sure, my name is Sina Meyer. I'm the project architect for the Oak Lodge Library Project. I'm with Opsis Architecture. I'm going to hand it off to Liz Manser. Hi, all. It's good to see you again. I'm Liz. I'm the PM for the Opsis and JA design team. Mona? Hi, everyone. I'm Mona Zellers. I'm a partner at Johnston Architects, and we are partnered with Opsis on the library. Oh, I'm supposed to hand it off. Yeah. Kim? I am Kim Parman, and I'm a task force member. Oh, Dennis. Dennis Hickey, a task force member. Shonda Wild, task force member via phone. <laughs> and Anita, why don't you go? Yeah, and I'm Anita Blackmar, task force member. With with the name that nobody can figure out by the way it's spelled. <laughs> <laughs> um, and last but not least, Diane. Hi, I'm Diane Alves. I'm the executive director at the Clackamas County Arts Alliance. Okay. All right. And then we'll have Jim Kalvich join. I think you all know Jim. He's a principal at Opsis Design Lead on the project. Um, I will go ahead and share my screen. And sometimes when I'm sharing screen, I can't see you all. So if, if there's any questions, comments, hands up, if somebody could give me a verbal clue. Q clue that would that would be great. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share, and we'll hit the present. All right, can you all see my screen that has the title of the meeting today? Awesome. I actually can't see you on the side there. I see the thumbs up. <laughs> um, brief review of the agenda so you know what to expect um, before we launch into content. We did introductions. Um, we want to make sure we kind of review um, the um, approximate art budget that um, we have in mind for this project and the timeline of meetings for this group and how it fits in within the timeline of the construction of this project. Um, we would love to hear from you all before we kind of share thoughts that we've developed over time um, living and working on this project. Um, so we'd love to do some brainstorming on what you think makes good public art on where you could imagine public art on this site. Um, we'll give this group and I think most of you all being task force members kind of know the project well enough, but want to make sure we all understand where the library sits, the programming within the library. Um, I think, Diane, this will be good for you to see as well. Um, and then we'll have some slides on art site locations that we as a team have identified. Doesn't mean those are all of them. Those are ones that we felt like, hey, this would make a good location for a piece of art, um, but wanted to run those by you. Um, that includes kind of three different types of art um, within the library. There are locations that we feel like could be um, strong contenders for rotating art, um, for changing art. Um, there are some opportunities within the architecture um, where we have integrated art that we wanted to share with you all. Um, and then there is the public art piece that will be the focus of this group, both on the inside of the library and then again in the park area, um, potentially with the NCPRD um, funded art. Um, and then if we get to this, great. If we don't, we can start talking about kind of prioritizing um, based on what we present and what we hear from you all. Um, and kind of summarize um, the conversation and then do a quick wrap up and next steps. 
Um, I think the chat feature is available to you all if questions do come up. Um, please feel free to use that as well. Yeah, all right, man. All right. Is that background chatter or is is that a question? Is it Jim? <laughs> it's mystery Liz. Oh. I don't know. It must be Jim somehow. She's chatty. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Go ahead. Um, we did introductions already. I think you by now and know our team. Um, we're partnered with PNC Construction um, and then our engineering team, landscape architects, structural, mechanical, MEP, and signage are listed here as well. Um, in terms of how we kind of fit in within the project schedule, we are um, right here right now. We are um, working towards um, a, a, a documentation deadline, the very beginning of May, and then we'll launch into permitting um, in the summer, and then the projected construction start date is October of this year. Um, in terms of budget, Jason, I don't know if you want to speak to this slide. Um, I can too, but I'll I'll let you. Yeah. So, yeah, take um, the lead. really, what we're looking at here is the the goal is to we're we're setting aside one percent of the cost of construction for public art. So these numbers you see here basically represent that one percent. Um, left over and these funds would be used for all the public art um, on the site and they're they're not intended to be used for anything else so um, as I said the library has their own um, pot for public art and then NCPRD for their project um, also has their um, allotment with that one percent this is what all I had to say for that Nice. Um, in terms of meeting schedule, and, and maybe this shortens up just depending on, on how quickly, quickly we move through these steps, but you know, today we're just kind of starting the conversation, um, see if we can prioritize or start to. There might be a little bit of homework in terms of um, establishing a theme if we feel like that's valuable to this project and that could kind of tie together all the artwork, start to think about that. And then when we meet again, then this meeting time has not been set. Um, really talk through the themes and the goals for each of the sites that we identify, um, and then refining the budget um, and what the specific locations are. And then from there, we would launch into an RFP, a call for art, um, reviewing proposals, and then ultimately making a selection. Um, all right, I'm going to pause right here. And if you see stickies pop up, um, that is Liz in the background populating. But we're just kind of curious to hear from this group. Um, anything, any thoughts surrounding public art um, that you've seen maybe in relationship to libraries or public parks that you feel like are successful or any ideas before we kind of share um, what we came up with? It'd be great to hear from you all. Anata, I see your hand up. Uh, yes, I um, I haven't even seen it, but I know that what has been proposed from the Grand Ron, uh, Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ron for Milwaukee Bay Park as a public mm -hmm. art installation is pretty dazzling. And I imagine it's out of our budget, but um, it does make me think that uh, I would like to look into uh, seeing if the Grand Ron Confederated Tribes wanted to be part of this project. Um, also, um, I've seen public art that doesn't work very well. Maybe it's mm. kind of plunked in like an afterthought and it doesn't really seem integral to the architecture or to the situation it's in. Mm -hmm. It's more like, okay, it's required. We have to check that box. We'll put some public art in here, but it doesn't necessarily um, really fit beautifully. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was just talking to an architect uh, for an hour <laughs> before this meeting, and um, he was saying that you need really well-defined guidelines, um, and that some things that are cutting edge now, there are these trends, right, that a lot of art is a big screen that's an electronic uh, piece of art, which I hadn't, wasn't really familiar with, but that we needed to consider that going forward, because that's something that's 
becoming very common that wasn't common before. Mm. Um, the other thing is, um, well, he and I both were saying, it's, if you have a high ceiling area like a lobby, it's pretty wonderful to have something from the ceiling like a kinetic art, kinetic, you know, get an Alexander Calder or something and <laughs> put it in there. <laughs> and um, I, I, I think that's how they've got something like that in the Oregon City Library. Mm -hmm. Nice, thank you for sharing. I see Diane, you have your, um, you have your hand up as well. Unmute myself. Um, yeah, just really quick on some of the things that the Arts Alliance, we are working really closely with folks that are doing the art committee for the new courthouse also. And so mm -hmm. there might be an opportunity, um, depending on timeline and thing like that, mm -hmm. to, to maybe um, share some artists and things like that. The one thing mm -hmm. I'll say about the Grand Ronde, which I think could be worth having a conversation with them, um, and we work really closely with them too, is they're very interested in if there's a specific tribe that is known for um, the area around where things are being built. Um, they're more than willing to help tell that tribal creation story um, and um, really do some work. They recently did a project um, with the city of Malala around telling a very specific tribal creation story there. And a piece of art was created about that story. So. It, I definitely think it's worth having you all have a conversation with them because um, they're more than willing to have those cultural conversations. Um, the other thing, and I know we'll probably get to this a little bit later, is we're more than capable to help, um, you know, do help with the call to artists and obviously drive that out through all of our artists and networks and things like that. So it just kind of depends on how much support you need um, for that. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll talk about the rotating art when we get to that space. I mean, that's not, that's something we do all the time. So we currently have those 17 galleries around the county. So that's an easy piece for us to talk about. Um, I do think when you are all thinking about how you want to put this together, you want to think, especially with the public art, um, think about things that are lasting and necessarily won't have to be replaced in a few years. And I know lots of people like wood, but, you know, um, unless you want it that way, sometimes people really, like I know the um, installation that they're doing at Milwaukee Bay, they're going to bring it in and then take it back out every year yeah. um, during migration time. Mm -hmm. um, but if you leave wood out, it will over time um, change and look different. And some people necessarily don't like that, but it could be part of your theme. Um, and so over, if it's an outdoor piece and it's wood, you know, every five or seven years, you could do a new call to artists. So um, that's just something I know some folks are thinking about over time instead of doing metal or something like that. So I think that's all I got for now. Those are great insights and thanks for the context on the Grand Ron. Thank you. Um, Dennis or Kim? Yeah. I see you both have your hands Kim, up. Go ahead. Sure. Um, so I really like the idea of working with um, local indigenous tribes. Like I was coming here to say that in the first place. So I'm glad that um, other people have acknowledged that as well. Um, I think that just thinking in terms of what's successful, the I, I really like the quantum sculptures and I don't know how to specifically say this name, but Julian Voss and Dre, I think mm -hmm. um, that's done some quantum sculptures around town is kind of an interesting thing to look at, you know, thought provoking and people seem to like it. Uh, I also think that botanical or things that tie in the nature of the outside since we're having so much um mm -hmm. of the project focus on the park like how, how can we bring those outdoor elements of the park inside through art might be an interesting thing to explore too mm -hmm. great thank you and then dennis okay thank you so i appreciate the idea of the uh, rotating art i think uh certain areas indoors that could be very cool. Um, I'm wondering what we can learn from folks who have, do, have done this sort of thing. Like I'm wondering if on the trolley trail, I believe there's art was put on that. Uh, would it be behoove us to pick the brains of people who've gone through the process and where did they see 
enlightenment and where did they see the dark? So uh, mm -hmm. that might be helpful to us. Um, some interactive art, and maybe that's better for outside. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I've seen some pieces that are very cool um, that you can uh, push or pull that sort of thing and it creates a reaction. That's, mm -hmm. um, I like that. Um, and then um, I, I uh, also am wondering, it, it, do, we have, do we have the right people on the bus? Mm. Uh, I assume we do, but um, then again, I'm not sure. So that's just a question maybe people can think about. Are there people, um, maybe an artist proper that's, mm -hmm. that's been hired to do some work or like I said before, somebody has gone through this process mm -hmm. that learned a lot around uh, along the way. Mm -hmm. I, I also like the tick on the local tribes piece. I think the more we can do with that and, and just that we um, are really thoughtful about the type of art and so it doesn't side with one segment of society. So um, it has a broad appeal to uh, people of all uh, colors and ways of life, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. Great, thank you. And then Shonda, are you still on, on the phone? Yes, can you hear me? We can, yes. Okay, I definitely agree with the indigenous art and particularly with the tribes that lived and worked in the Concord area. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be good to also revisit some of the map visions and values and the community thoughts from our uh, task force open houses mm -hmm. to regroup with what the community wants. I'd like to think about the historical aspect of Concord and the property. Mm -hmm. I definitely like the idea of rotating art and playful art and interactive art and the kinetic art that Anita was talking about. So I think there's a lot of options in terms of, you know, sculptures, fibers, mm -hmm. interactive mm -hmm. kinetic art and the, uh, you know, the botanical work. Uh, I think we've got some great options here and Yes, thank you to Diane for being able to help us with the call to artists because that's a, a huge process. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm excited about this and I think we've I think we're doing a good start. That's it for now. Great, thank you. Um do we wanna briefly um circle back to Anata and then Dennis, I see your hand up as well. Well, I really like what Dennis said about art that would that every, you know, the most different kinds of people could relate to. And I think having a nature theme really works for that as well as mm -hmm. reflecting the mm -hmm. fact that the library and the park are going to be mm -hmm. coordinated. So I think I really appreciate that, Dennis. And mm -hmm. also the interactive art. I think that's really so cool. And I'm so glad you brought that up. I hadn't thought of that. Mm -hmm. So another thing I've been thinking about is the teen area of the library and and wishing that the teens themselves could make the art that would be there. I assume it would be, you know, rotating art, not something permanent, but that they would really take ownership of the space uh, with their own art and maybe with making zines as well. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I know one woman who specializes in making the zine part happen. So um, I just think the teens should take command of, in a certain sense of their area in terms of the art there. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Well, one thing I've been thinking about is just in terms of budget, does all the art have to be commissioned or could some of it be just purchased art that already exists, just in terms of that might be less expensive and maybe we could have some of both. So I guess that's it. All right. Um, 
That's great. I'm definitely hearing some themes emerge. It seems like the nature theme and the interest in kinetic um, sculptures and the work with the tribes. Um, this is really great. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Um, we will definitely come back to this, um, but wanted to share just some context so we can talk about some of these ideas within the context of the building and kind of show you opportunities that we have identified and then maybe come back to um, some others where there isn't overlap currently. Um, just super quick. I'm, Jim joined me here. Yes, yeah, so okay, <laughs> um, Great comments. I think I was here soon enough to hear most mm -hmm. of them. I was really taken with the idea of art for the teens. Um, this was quite a conversation on the Gladstone Library. Mm -hmm. Many of you were involved with that or familiar. And the idea of that being changing art, we talked about permanent art. At, at this point in time, there isn't uh, a specific art location or, or framework or, or walls in a teen area. And I think that's something perhaps we want to consider, uh, just so you are aware that that's a really great idea and it makes it dynamic, it makes it theirs. So um, that's kind of food for thought for us. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thanks, Jim. Um, all right. Um, just wanted to briefly just touch on site plan and overall programming within the library. I think you all are familiar. Um, but we have the library, obviously we have the space between the Concord Community Center and the library, large plaza in front of it, the playground component, and then this large kind of loop trail in the park area, and then obviously the parking lot and the approach in front of Concord. Um, in terms of the library itself, um, I'm going to move you all over here. Um, this is the plaza down here um, on the bottom of the page, large ramp coming into um, the vestibule and then the lobby area right here. Um, back to the um, community room, the large meeting room. This off to the right is all support spaces, restrooms, janitor's closet, um, and so forth. Uh, these are the main entry doors from the lobby into the library. Um, you can see there, there's this kind of spine through a large opening here with a view out to the park. But this is really the main stack area. Then on the bottom of the page, this is a lounge area with views out to the plaza and landscape. Small study room here. The teens are nestled within this corner right here. Um, and then the children's area is up here um, in the upper um, left-hand corner. And then the centerpiece is really the workroom, staff areas, and support spaces, electrical room, and so forth. Um, so just to kind of reorient you, the friends area is right here, right off the main entry. Seed library is right here. All right, and I think we are going to start on the interior and then we're gonna go um, to the exterior and sort of end with park locations. And Mona is kind of gonna walk you through some of these interior locations um, for, for art. Um, before we do that, I just wanted to um, talk a little bit about the color coding we're using throughout the presentation. So we briefly touched on the kind of different opportunities when it comes to art. There's the public art um, within the library that will be funded with the library art budget. Um, that's that 1% number that Jason uh, spoke to. And then there's the same piece for the NCPRD side, for the park side, that will be funded with the NCPRD art budget. So those are the two green sites. Um, there's rotating art opportunities. Right now, what we're carrying on our side in the construction budget is just the infrastructure. So we're providing rails for hanging the art, but the operational cost is not currently funded. Um, and then there's this blue piece. There are locations within the building that we are already thinking about integrating art in the architecture. Um, that's the children's area. There's opportunities there. And Sina, I think one thing I would just add is, yeah. Sina kind of mentioned this before, we've been like living this the past couple of years and obviously you all have too. So these are our preliminary ideas. And I just want to make sure that you all know that this is not all encompassing of the opportunities, it's just things that we've started to identify. So this is all up for conversation. Thanks, Liz. Good point. Um, just an overview in terms of the exterior. These are some opportunities, right? Um, in terms of the park, these will be park funded. 
Um, there's the plaza area here um, in front of the library, but all the way connecting through to the playground. There's the amphitheater area that's just outside of the library that also connects to the playground and then, of course, to the park as well. Um, and then the light green ones are closer to the library, so those could be considered library sites. Um, there's landscaped areas that exist right in front of the library, off to the side, and right in front of the lounge. And then there's this space um, that has this connecting trail to the meeting room that has an entry here and then back up to these stairs between the Con Concord and Oak Lodge that we could look at as a site as well. In terms of the interior, and I'm going to move this down here, that's better. Um, we have, and in green, again, those are um, sites that we identified for public art. Um, the lounge, if you all remember, we have these carved out areas that kind of pop up into the ceiling space. Um, there's two of those. Um, there might be opportunity for a hanging sculpture. There's a lot of uh, play with light. Um, so we have those two here. There's also a very large wall above here, and we have some views of that wall um, that could be a contender. Obviously, the lobby space could be both a public art site and a rotating art site. Same with the meeting room. We have wall space there. Um, could be rotating, could be public art as well. Um, the history room, too. Currently, we are showing a hanging rail, so there's opportunity for historic image display. Um, and then the blue sites, and at Dennis, I see your hand up. I'm going to pause here after I touch on these two. Those are the sites that we identified as art sites that are integrated into the architecture. Um, it's the children's area nook. We have this lighting installation that's currently funded as part of the construction budget. That is this kind of art piece or jewel in itself. And then there's the ceiling installation um, that could go either way. Currently, we're carrying it as part of the construction budget, but could also become a piece where we collaborate with an artist. Um, I'm going to pause. Dennis, did you have a question? I did. So yeah. uh, just a quick one. The integrated yeah. art you've mentioned, is what budget does that come out of? Does that come out of the art budget or does that come out of the 99% budget? Currently, the blue sites are part of the construction budget and not the public art. The 99% budget. The 99, that's right. Yeah. Good Thanks. question. All right. I Tina, going... Anita has her hand up as well. Oh, thank you, Anita. Uh, yeah, just a quick question. You said mm -hmm. something about opportunities with light in the, I think it's the F area. Mm -hmm. uh, could you elaborate? Yeah, these are those um, light wells behind the screens. Mm -hmm. um, so there's definitely kind of filtered light coming in through the screens. We also have lighting within that kind of cave area. And so there's a lot of volume that we feel like we could play with a sculpture within that volume. Thank you. Yeah. Good, Good question. Dennis, do you have your hand up again? Sorry. No. Okay. <laughs> just wanted to make sure we're not. Good My catch, bad. Mona. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think it's my turn. I'm I'm gonna just walk us through the um the sites that Sina just identified on the plan. Um as we were identifying these spots, we were thinking about all of the different types of art display, um, all the different types of art uh, that we could possibly have in, in this space. I think we we didn't think of uh, a few things that were just mentioned actually a little earlier, like projection, and that has my wheel spinning right now. But we were thinking about um, kind of where can we have wall mounted? Where is it more appropriate to have something that could be rotating or three-dimensional or even kinetic? So I'll, I'll try and kind of touch on those, uh, what we were imagining um, kind of in these different spaces as we go through. Um, so the first two are, are the spots that are really integrated with the architecture currently in the construction budget. The first one is in the children's area, and it's in this um, wood alcove that's kind of connected to the uh, the wood shelving next to it. Um, this space we've we've you might have heard us talk about this space before. It's uh, an upholstered seating area, and it has a secret 
higher ceiling on the inside of that space. So the idea is that if you if you go into that upholstered uh, nook you and you look up, you have an experience of uh, seeing this kind of mirrored grotto um, space with lights all around. And if you've ever seen, I, I actually clipped a small photo of the uh, Yayoi Kusama's infinity room um, but you can also Google it and get a 10,000 images of, of um, this idea of lights and mirrors and just kind of creating this magical experience above your head. The infinity rooms are a little bit more um, uh, immersive than what we're talking about here because we're just talking about something that's above, um, above your head, but it's really meant to be um, a kind of secret uh, special space that's really just for the, the children. Um, so that's that's one integrated piece. And then the next one is also in the children's area. And this um, this is a ceiling installation. And the idea here is that it, it's kind of um, it is both functional and beautiful. So um, the 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 beauty side is that it's it's an opportunity to provide something in the ceiling plane above your head that's um, a bright pop of color. Um, we have a lot of wood and a lot of kind of neutrals and grays and some greens um, in the library. And then we have these moments um, in certain furniture elements and then also in the ceiling piece that are a bit brighter. Uh, they're meant to evoke um, maybe yellow leaves in the fall or wildflowers. I was just in California and they are having a super bloom and some areas are just covered in bright yellow flowers. So that kind of um, is the idea here. Uh, but these pieces are also made out of felt. They happen to hang right above the most active part of the floor plan in the children's area. So they're intended to provide a little bit of acoustic dampening um, so that things don't get too loud um, in the library. They're just right above the children's area there. And that image there, I think someone threw it in of the of the Swifts, right? At the, is it the Chapman School? Yeah. Chapman Elementary, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's kind of uh -huh. swarm configuration. Yeah. Right. Oh. Anita, you have your hand up. Uh, yeah, like do the, the, do the elements move in the flow of the air? that would be hanging in the ceiling? That's a great question. I think they could move. Um, they don't have to move, but right now I think we're saying they're held up with um, very thin uh, wire. So they would hypothetically move if, if, there was, if there was air movement in that space. Okay. All right. Should I move to the next one? So yeah, these let's are kind of the integrated one. locations, and mm -hmm. we're kind of moving to orange, which is our color for rotating art opportunities. That's right. So the orange areas we've identified are areas that that are a little bit easier to access. So uh, for someone who is trying to, you know rotate art through the space, it's easier to, to mount and demount the art in these areas. Um, and this is the wall, the back wall of the history conference room. So uh, the, our initial thoughts about this wall um, uh, were that you could maybe provide historical imagery or uh, some art that was related to the history uh, of the site or of the, um, of the area. So this is really kind of uh, open, an open area with a picture rail. So you can hang really whatever you want, but it's wall mounted. And that's, I think, yeah, it's it's pretty clear here. It's the long side of the history conference room. The short side has a, a monitor on it. Diane, did you have your hand up? Yeah, sorry. Um, so when you talk about a um, rail, what kind of rail are you thinking about? Are you installing something? Because what we currently mm -hmm. use in all our sites is the uh, Arakawa system. Yeah, and so it's that's just it. Really easy. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, I think that's just really the easiest. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing is um, there's a there's as best you can. There's ways that you can secure those. So um, even though we just recently had something stolen from one of the county buildings. Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, it's it just kind of deters folks from just taking stuff and walking out with it. There's ways to secure things. So that's great. Um, I like the idea. I saw you had the history detectives on here. I like the idea of working with them and having them do something for that room. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. I see Anata's hand up as well. Oh yeah. I'm not so familiar with this. Actually, I'm not familiar with it at all, but the architect that I was having a meeting with earlier today said that, um, He's used to like designing hospitals and that sort of thing. He says it's very common now to have like an electronic uh, display area. And that, you, of course, you want to prepare for that at the beginning, not try to retrofit it later, but that you would need the electricity, you would need the screen, and you would need the connection to a computer. And he thought maybe in the history conference room, that could be an ongoing display of historical images. Now, I'm not promoting it. I'm just saying that was a, an idea I got from someone in our community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and I think I can speak for the team and say that that, that is absolutely possible in this location. Um, it, I think there may be trade-offs between having something that's, you know, that's a rotating flat art that you can switch out uh, versus having a monitor or a series of monitors, but um, both are, are equally possible in this space. And Mona, I think one thing to add is, so we do have a monitor in that space, and the idea is you could use that for presentations and meetings and things like that, but maybe, Anita, that's something that at times it's not being used. There's a slideshow mm -hmm. that it's showing. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It's a really yeah. simple, easily accessible way oh, yeah. to do that digital art. Mm -hmm. Right. That'd be cool. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. I'm going to go to the next location, the lobby. Okay, so the lobby has both, uh, we, while well, we've identified um, an area that could be more rotating art, which is the lower portion of the long wall across from the main entry to the library, um, the part that's kind of outlined in, in orange on the elevation. And then we have a higher portion of the wall um, that's, that could be a more permanent art installation. This is a tall space. As you can see from the, the elevation, there's quite a lot of wall. So, uh, you know, you, you could choose to do something only on the lower portion and have that be rotating art. Uh, you could choose to do something only on the upper portion of the wall and that's maybe more permanent. Um, or you could choose to do something that kind of covers the entire wall. That, um, there's a lot of flexibility here. We do have a few openings on the lower portion of that wall. We have an opening into the restroom area. You can kind of see it in the middle there. Um, and then we have an, a door, which is a, I believe it's a frameless door, right, Sina? It is. Uh, so it's meant to sort of blend into the wall. Uh, you're not going to really notice it that much, but it still will be there um, visible on the wall. So those are a couple things that we're trying to think about. Um, in terms of art display. And that's one of the reasons that we we were suggesting maybe there's a, a datum line, a horizontal line at the top of that opening that kind of divides the upper portion of the wall um, and the lower portion of the wall and provides a spot to put the art rail um, to then hang art below it. Yeah, just to elaborate on this, Jim, uh, that's, that's right. I think above that rail, we're thinking about more of an acoustical uh, material up there. A uh, lobby like that could be pretty loud and um, not feel as comfortable. But I, the high volume that uh, Monica acknowledged close to the entry door could be a really great location for a hanging um, mobile or, or something of that nature that could be light and delicate. There is kind of a theme that's starting to happen about this library uh, in terms of even a children's area where uh, art is hanging from the ceiling or even the expanded volume uh, within the children's uh, kind of reading nook or these light cannon areas. So um, it's kind of interesting where the ground plane is more relocated or to uh, connection to the park and landscape or uh, changing art. So mm -hmm. it, it's mm -hmm. kind of interesting to see how the building takes on mm -hmm. its own character, potentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Diane, um, I see your hand up. Yeah, I think as I look at this, it would be great 
um, if, if for the rotating art pieces, you have an ability to do very large pieces, which mm -hmm. is not something you normally see in rotating art because they're difficult to hang, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and so there is the ability, I think, for you all to think about in the in the regular sort of um, uh, if you do permanent pieces somewhere to do some really amazing large uh, pieces mm -hmm. that, um, you know, depending on what you, I mean, there's some really uh, awesome artists right now that live in Clackamas County. And that's what you're always going to get from me. I'm going to advocate for Clackamas County artists first mm -hmm. um, that are living in Clackamas County that are doing some really, you know, there's, um, I don't know if people know Jeremy Okai David, like a bunch of folks that are doing really beautiful, vibrant mm -hmm. pieces that, um, could be really cool in a place where it's either higher or in a place where you want to have, you know, permanent art. I think that would be, mm -hmm. yeah, that would be really great. I think that would just mm -hmm. really add something to when people first come in also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see Kim, Dennis, and Anata have their hands up. Kim, I, I think I saw yours go up first. Yeah, I, I just think that along those lines, it might be kind of interesting, and I certainly don't want to add anything else to the staff's plate, but um, if we were to have local artists display their art, and perhaps there's some kind of budget for rotating art, or perhaps there's not, maybe a way around that is giving them opportunity to sell their pieces mm -hmm. um, somehow, like have contact information for those artists mm -hmm. and see if that's like people might clamor for the opportunity to display their art if they can get their name out and sell their pieces. So something mm -hmm. to consider. Nice. Dennis? Uh, just, a, just a comment. Um, yeah. Thinking about this rotating art mm -hmm. and, you know, do you buy it? Uh, do you have artist work available and then have it for sale like you've seen coffee shops sometime? Or uh, mm -hmm. it seems to me you can loan art probably from the Portland Art Museum, like you would check out a book at the library. Mm -hmm. So just uh, planting that seed to check out those things um, because mm -hmm. it might be um, art from a well-known artist of, of a large scale that you could actually uh, loan from, from the art museum in Portland and bring out, so. Yeah, Diane, I, I'm sure you can speak to that piece, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's actually, it's probably a good time for me to jump in. Um, yeah. One of the programs that the Arts Alliance does is we do, um, we have an artist exhibit program and we work with, currently we're over 200 artists in Clackamas County. Um, and, and what we do is we offer them a site. So we offer them, you know, the, the library site. Um, mm -hmm. They apply every year. And then every, either every three months or four months, um, depending on your budget, um, we come in and rotate out the art. The artists donate that art to come in. We come in and install it. It is for sale. There is information about each piece, how much the piece is, um, and they they work directly with the artist. We have the contact information. They'll go directly to the artist, so there's no middle person in that. Um, if the artist sells that piece, they have to leave it up through the time period that it's hanging. Um, and then when they take it down, then the person who bought it can do that. And we have that fairly often, artists selling pieces. Um, a lot of times um, we're working with artists that have been doing their artistry for a while. And this is this is their first opportunity to actually participate in, in kind of their first showing. Um, mm -hmm. So the great thing is, is that artists do a really good job about inviting people into the space, come and see their art come and see what they're doing. And mm -hmm. so really the only cost to, to the library is what you pay us in order to do that rotating piece. Um, and I think once we get done kind of talking about um, all the different places and, and uh, the budget for us is, is um, uh, I think pretty reasonable. And I think it looks like kind of just what I glanced at, it might be depending on how many pieces and how many times you decide to rotate out, it'll be between 2,500 and 4,000 a year for you to do that, mm -hmm. depending on, I can't quite tell all the places yet, but we try to make it really reasonable. So artists, our main goal is just to get the art out into the community and to highlight 
Clackamas County artists. So the other thing we're doing, and, and somebody talked about um, kids art, is we work with the education school district and every year they mm -hmm. do a big call throughout middle schools and high schools and they have a big art show. And it might be an opportunity for you right after that art show to have your local schools have um, the artists that that participated in that art show to have it come into a space too. So there's mm -hmm. lots of different ways we can work together. If there's something going on at the library, like we just did at all of the, um, the DSB and PSB for the county, we just did a um, Black History Month. We worked with them around doing Black History Month. Um, we do a local Clackamas County um, uh, employee um, photography show. And so everybody submits a piece and we hang that in the county buildings. So there's lots of different options in the ways that we can work with you on that program. But um, hopefully uh, you'll see that it's it's worthwhile and the art changes out often and it's a way to bring people into the space. So mm -hmm. if people have questions about that, we can talk more about it. And obviously once I get all the spatial um, the sizes and how many um, pieces we think we want to hang if we want to do large or small or mediums or whatever then I can get you even better pricing on that but that's kind of the brief synopsis of it <laughs> that's great thank you um Jason I saw your hand up yeah um I just wanted to say too that and we've gone we're obviously ahead of this process at Gladstone and um, when we talked about the rotating art, you know, a possibility too is, you know, the friends um, group for Gladstone, um, you know, that's an opportunity to use some of the funds that they have um, to put towards that. So that's something, you know, maybe we can think about for this, this site too, as far as like, like I think Mona mentioned, we would put in the infrastructure, mm -hmm. um, but that yearly cost to keep that rotating something that's not in in this budget in our budget and that something that had to be figured out but um yeah i just wanted to throw that out there that the friends um mm -hmm. is participating with some of the public art on gladstone that's great. that's great okay should we move to the next let's location? do it uh okay so this is a, a similar kind of um, division, the way that we've divided up these walls um, into kind of a, a, a wall in the meeting room that is, uh, has kind of a lower and an upper portion and then a wall that just has an upper portion. Um, this is the meeting room. I think if you remember the plan, it's just at the end of the main lobby hallway. Um, it has, uh, it has a tall wall that you can see in the rendering on the left side, um, adjacent to the entry. So that wall is the one that's highlighted in orange um, and that we've identified as a place that could have rotating art. This could have a picture rail all the way at the top of the wall um, for really big <laughs> rotating art, as we talked about, or it could have something that's um, a little bit lower, maybe aligned with the mullion at 10 feet, still pretty tall, um, would accommodate uh, pretty large art pieces as well. Uh, and then right behind us, actually, in the in the 3D view, it's the wall that you can't see, um, is, a, is a, a window wall below a storefront. So there's glass below. And then above is just a, a essentially a blank canvas and empty wall that could be uh, a site for for more permanent art. Okay, um, this is the main library space. Uh, this is kind of right now in the 3D view, your back is to the history conference room and the study rooms and you're looking out um, towards the parking area. So towards the, the bottom of the plan, plan south. Um, it the, This whole wall is, uh, white right now so it's it's a pretty simple wall kind of wrapping around the whole space and we were thinking this could be another location um, potentially for permanent art this is one of those uh spots anita when you were talking about um projection i i thought of this uh spot in particular because you have enough space in the ceiling uh, behind you to potentially 
mount a projector or something like that. Um, but but this is a fairly prominent wall in the space. Um, it's you would see it kind of right when you walk in, and it would be very dominant um, uh, for in influencing your kind of experience of the library as a whole. Yeah, I, I mean, just from the experience of the library, this is the most prominent kind of location for permanent art. And could be really interesting, whether it's bas relief sculpture or, you know, could be could be a mural or something. But it's, I think, uh, the idea of something applied that has texture, depth, and place with the light could, could be really impactful um, in terms of the, the quality of this library. So it's, it's kind of the 100% site. All right, I think we have this one more on the interior. Right, and this is one that we talked about um, before, I think. So these are these very tall light wells. And in a way they're, they're similar to um, that, child, that secret children's area because um, I'm not sure you're, you're really going to perceive them from the other side of the library, but then it's something where you, you walk under um, into this lounge space and you, you realize that these are very tall kind of light filled spaces. Um, these are the spaces that are going to glow um, on the, you know, in those night views of the outside of the library, you'll see these spaces glowing um, through the screen. So they're, they are very prominent um, in, a, in a different way, but kind of hidden from some views in the library. And um, these spaces might be ideal for something hanging um, or something that reflects the light, something that's prismatic or, or kinetic or um, uh, something a little bit larger in scale. That's kind of interesting, uh, just based upon the prior view, too, is uh, the opposite wall is that long wall. And so you almost have an opportunity to have a kind of a triptych or or three locations of art where there's kind of synergy shared between those three sites. Mm -hmm. um, just something I recently kind of thought about because of their proximity. Anata, I see your hand up. Yes, does the light coming through make like filigree patterns on the uh, walls? Because of the screens having a pattern? Because of yeah. the perforations, yeah, I think you would definitely read that um, that light and shadow play against mm -hmm. the white walls. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let me see, I think this is, let's pause here real quick before we go to the exterior. Um, any other thoughts on locations that we didn't touch on? We heard the teens, right? Do we have that recorded um, for a potential rotating art location mm -hmm. or teen art display in the form of zines? Um, any other location, um, if I go back, let me go back to the overall plan. Um, see if there was a location that we did not talk about. Seems like we hit on the main ones, right? The kind of public spaces, the lobby, the lounge, obviously children's and teens, the meeting space. All right, then I will launch into the exterior and let me see if I can go back to presenting. Perfect. Um, all right, so these are locations on the exterior of the library. Um, and this is the light gray, uh, light green. Um, it could come from the library budget. So this is the area in front and we have landscape. This is the plan. This is the lounge space here that has those carves up above. This is the, the teens nook. This is the main entry. So we have landscape that basically wraps the library. And then we have this elevated planter between Concord and the library that's also a candidate for sculptural piece, um, a larger site piece. So any of these landscape areas we feel like are, you know, prime location uh, locations for, for any kind of sculptural work. 
And then in connection to this um, is this space between Concord and the library. Um, this back here is the meeting room that has this little patio, this outdoor space. So there's this kind of connecting trail um, back up to this loop trail. And there's landscaped areas to the left and the right. Um, this piece right here is a storm planter. So maybe less ideal for artwork, but there is planting along the whole edge of Concord. Um, so that would be something else to, to consider in terms of sculptural pieces, I think, especially here. When, if you go back one, yeah. just an observation of, of the outdoor sculpture here. Mm -hmm. um, there's the way the, uh, there's this kind of landscape element that projects out. It's, it really kind of sets up perhaps a certain scale of sculpture or there that might be larger than perhaps the planter um, near the seating area suggests something that's a more intimate scale or might even be a series of elements. You're talking that, here. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're both exterior sites, but they have inherently kind of different mm -hmm. uh, implicit character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anata, did you have a question, yeah. comment? Uh, about the area between the two buildings. Yeah. Uh, in my mind, I've been calling it a courtyard, but maybe it's more of a pathway. Is it more of just yeah. a, a throughway rather than a place where you would sit at some table or something? And I think yeah, so. The yes. of it? It's, I it's think something so. where you walk through. Mm -hmm. More of a connecting trail. Yeah. There is this space outside of the meeting room that's mm -hmm. kind of an eddy that opens up. And there are some boulders in that area. So there's seating opportunity, but not tabled with chairs. It's kind of a narrow connecting trail with these ins and outs that offer opportunity to, to, to sit. Okay, good to know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, and then I think the last two slides are um, park related, um, where we feel like um, maybe there's opportunity to um, dip into the NCPRD art budget. Um, there's the plaza, and obviously this is just a snippet. It extends, right? This is the drop-off zone right in front of the library, but it extends all the way over to the playground. Um, so there's there might be opportunity here all the way along this um, plaza area uh, for artwork. And then, also the amphitheater space, um, that is to the left in plan um, of the library. It has a connection to the library. Um, it has seatings. Um, there is an, an alternate that we are currently pricing for a water feature, but what if there isn't a water feature? Is that an opportunity for artwork? There's a planter area here. So there's a lot of opportunities for artwork, artwork sort of centered around this amphitheater space. And Sina, just for those of us who haven't been part of the Gladstone conversations, mm -hmm. the Gladstone Courtyard, that art committee um, identified a location in ground that would be signed kind of similar to what you've got shown in the upper right. Exactly, a story ring, and, and they would be working with a writer or a poet to identify language that would go along the story ring. Exactly, a similar setting. Um, I think I'm going to pause here again before we move on. So those are kind of the two park locations, the two library exterior locations. Any questions around those? Dennis, I see your hand up and then Anita's hand went up too. Yeah, thank you. This has been awesome. It's really exciting. When, nice. when will we know whether the water feature is part of the project or not? Jason, may I, may I, um, <laughs> let sorry. Me take this I'm sorry, Jason. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, it's a hard question to answer. I mean, it'll be, we'll know when we, when we bring the, the library to the board for a GMP approval, we'll know at that time. Right now, I would say that it's, I, I'm fairly certain it'll be carried as an alternate, that it won't be included um but we have had those final discussions with with um ncprd and the board to figure out you know what budget they can going forward but right now it's not a it's not one of the things that we've talked about keeping putting in the base scope that it would be alternate yeah no problem so so uh you'll present uh 
a package and that package yeah. will include these things we, we yeah. really feel have to happen and these are things we'd lo love to have happen mm -hmm. or maybe they yeah. should happen okay mm -hmm. yeah good thank you mm -hmm. anata yeah the water feature is a, a big thing in my mind as a something that maybe could be phased in later if there's no budget for it now but you'd have to set up the possibility now is that what you're talking about, Jason? When you say alternate, um, are you saying it's a maybe, but it's also a maybe that it would never happen? Yeah, it'd have to be part of the discussion. Uh, like you said, you don't want to rip up a brand new concrete amphitheater right. to put in that system. Um, but a lot of times to even to rough in, uh, you might as well put in the whole system if you're going to do it so it's it's something we yeah. got to think about and if there's a way to put in some parts of it um that doesn't cost too much we can definitely look at that but uh you know trust me we we definitely look at those things when you know before we make these decisions because you know sometimes um things do happen where you get the funding you know after the project's done um to do these things and you want to make it as seamless as you can. Yeah, I would love for that to be prioritized as something that would happen eventually. I think it would make a huge difference at this site at the, for for the for kids, right? Mm -hmm. and people who have kids or grandkids. I think it would just make it dazzling. And how many water features are in NCPRD? We don't have them yet. There's going to be one, there's <laughs> going to be one at Milwaukee Bay Park, but that'll be the first one. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Anyway, and I love this little um, fish, almost like a fossil that's shown oh, in this the that kind of stencil into the boulders. Mm -hmm. I think that for kids, if those kinds of things, if that kind of thing is integrated throughout the park or throughout the area, so that it's almost like a treasure hunt to find them all mm -hmm. would be a really cool thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that idea of discovery is, was one of the themes that uh, the group considered a gladstone for the for the artwork um, around the library. This idea that you would discover these these elements as you as you walk through the space. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's awesome. And you could even uh, have let's say there's 15 of them. Have kids find all 15, and then they could get a reward, a small book or scavenger hunt. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. School. All right, I'm going to um, go here. And again, this is just if 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 we have some sort of idea of where we want to focus, um, it'd be good to know. Um, we can also kind of let you think on this and then come back together during meeting two and revisit. But there, if 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 you have ideas of how to prioritize sites, it would be it would be nice to hear from you all where you think those locations are, both interior and exterior. Yeah, my gut is that we don't have to come to consensus today, but it would be yeah. great to hear first impressions. Yeah. And exactly. Yep. Dennis, are you already ready? Do you already have? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> And obviously, the structure is arbitrary. One, two, three, right? Um, it just depends on kind of where where we want to focus. You know, would it be helpful to go back to kind of the overall plan, maybe as a starting mm -hmm. point for reference? Yeah, let me do that. I will go um, to the plan right here. And I think another thing to think about, and and maybe. Um, maybe Diane can help a little bit with this, um, is understanding what a goal for count is, right? Like we wanna make sure that each piece has enough funding to be a really substantial substantial, and successful piece, um, but also provide enough opportunity. So I think we should you know, be a little judicious about how many sites we mm -hmm. pick. Um, mm -hmm. It could be two, yeah. it could be four, it could be one absolutely gigantic four-story mm -hmm. sculpture at the front door. So. Yeah, I think I think it depends on. Um, I mean, we have folks throughout the county doing things a little bit different depending on what their budget is. So you could pick two sites and say you want, um, you know, maybe one site where you want a larger piece, 
um, and a site where maybe you want, you know, like that walkway, you know, in the bed of the walkway, maybe you want three smaller things that are maybe, you know, maybe they're fish migrating or something. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so you have those two sites and you do a call to artists for a bigger, you know, a bigger piece and a smaller piece. And um, you assign a budget number to it. I mean, we're really recommending that. Um, if you if you say, you know what, we only have $10,000 for this piece, um, to go ahead and put that in the call. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes artists will do that, or sometimes they'll come back and try to negotiate a little bit. But um, I think if you have a budget to go ahead and, and say that, if if you have somebody specific that you want to work with or that you've heard about, um, I recommend that you have you reach out to that artist and have a conversation with them and say, you know, we're really interested in having one of your pieces at this library. Um, and, you know, can can we talk to you about that? Now, that's not necessarily doing a call, um, it, but that's more of a conversation you have with one specific artist if you really want to do that. Um, and then you can have a call throughout the rest of the space. So I think it's better to kind of settle down on, based on your budget, um, I, I would say to settle on, on a, a price that you think, um, and, and I'm happy to help you do this just because we have, you know, some ideas about what things are going for. Um, but that you settle on a price and then and just see and maybe do your call and see what you get um, mm -hmm. for that. Because there's always artists that will do their things. And so um, you might have to do a couple different calls to get everything that you want. But mm -hmm. um, and then and then that gives you some flexibility if you need to add a little bit more. You know, so if you talk to an artist and say, we love what you turned in, what what happens if instead of a $10,000 piece, it's a $15,000 piece or a $20,000 piece, and then you can and kind of figure that out. Um, but yeah, when you do the call being as specific as possible, I think will help you. But budget wise, I think, I mean, actually, I really am happy you have a budget <laughs> where, I, you know, I'm working with the courthouse and the courthouse doesn't have a budget. They want mm -hmm. art throughout the courthouse, but they they want people to donate it. And I I don't know how that's gonna go. <laughs> I'm I'm sitting back and observing most of that process because uh I we are big proponents for paying people for their art, even if it's a little bit, it's a compensation. And um I think it's really important to do that. So <laughs> anyway, um yeah, I don't know if you have other questions about that or if that was helpful at all. I think if you have a budget, that's the best place to start. And don't spend if your if your budget is that hundred and fifty, um, figure out kind of come up with a few things that you think you can um, pay for, including internal, external, all that kind of stuff, and then um, do the call and see what you get. See what kind of artists will respond to it because I think you will get some responses either way. Mm -hmm. And. Kim has actually started us off with uh, chat. At, oh, nice. So I can not monitoring here. I can read it out um, unless Kim, all of a sudden your internet see, magically fixed itself. Um, I think prioritization for the main wall feature with texture, et cetera, the window wells and the children's area. Um, mm -hmm. Impactful pieces in those areas will do the heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I see Dennis, you have your hand up as well. Yeah, I do. And yeah. uh, my ignorance is going to show here because I, I have no clue if $250,000 is uh, a lot or a little um, regarding the types of arts we're talking about, sculptures, painting, uh, things hanging from the ceiling. But I guess in thinking that, uh, I'm trying to think about what are we talking about as a process? So I think what you're saying is uh, picking some areas. Like for me, off the top of the head, children's area would be big. The lobby as you walk in would be big. Teen area would be big. I think teens would do well with that. The entry mm -hmm. and maybe the park. But I don't, I could also say every area needs an allocation of this $250,000. So I guess. I don't really know if that's a lot. And I, I would hate to say we want these five areas and we, um, with the money we have, we break out the budget and then we under budget mm -hmm. because we chose five. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I don't have a clue about the money. Uh, maybe others would be 
helpful with that. Uh, can we pick 10 things? Can we pick five things? That That's mm -hmm. where I'm sitting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not helpful, but it's a question, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's a good one. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if anybody's gone up to Happy Valley and looked at their um, sculpture garden up at Happy Valley. You might want to go and look at their sculpture garden. Yeah, they do a call every year and um, they do a call to artists. They give the artist in their call. They say um, you'll be the compensation is a thousand dollars. Um, and they do that call every year with a thousand dollars and they swap them out and people come and visit them. So um, the so you could do something like that or um i think gosh and i don't know it was a long time ago a long time ago um when the new county buildings were being built the the um two of the pieces the outdoor pieces up there one was 70,000 and one was 82,000 i think mm -hmm. um both both of those were to artists outside. They were one was a Colorado artist and one was, I think, on the East Coast somewhere. I can't remember exactly. Um, but they chose those artists because they wanted something very specific. Um, and so they kind of just negotiated with the artist afterwards about the pricing. So again, I think you've got some really good people locally that would love the opportunity to do it. Um, and unless, I mean, you know, you, you're talking about some kinetic things, I guess if you, <laughs> what you can't do is probably do a Chihuly somewhere, right? You can't hang that in the library as well. I, maybe I shouldn't say that. Maybe they do have a whole donating thing where you can get something for the library. Mm -hmm. And we shouldn't rule that out, I guess. But there might be somebody local that could do a similar thing if you wanted to hang something like that from the ceiling. And Anita, before just before I jump in, I I know Jim has recently gone through this process on uh, community center up in Redmond, and I think that's knowing that it's a very different project, different budget, but just an idea. You guys had uh, four sites, right? And mm -hmm. each one ranged from thirty to eighty thousand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that maybe helps us just like big picture start to zone in on the target of maybe it's maybe three sites feels right as a starting point. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, Anada, I know you, you had your hand up. I'm not in a hurry, but uh, I, I have to, I, I've forgotten this children's grotto, which I totally love. That doesn't come out of our budget, right? No. Okay. That's already accounted for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, yeah. Glad to hear it. That's well, the, mirrors the, and lighting and it's, yeah, it's just in the architectural. So we're yeah. good. Yeah, that that's just a, a, a very imaginative thing. I think we're really lucky to have that. Thank you for designing that. Um, and the lounge area, which is F, right? That's where the play of light happens the most, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think, I mean, I'm just wondering about it, you know, something hanging from the ceiling that would move that the light patterns would would constantly be changing on the surface of whatever's there. And I know sometimes the light's gonna be the color of the sunset because that's yeah. facing the sunset area. Mm -hmm. So for me, that seems like an exciting possible place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of there are um, there are some skylights in the metro station in Den in Copenhagen that have prisms, just fixed oh. prisms in them. Ooh. And so um, at different times of day, there wow. are there are rainbows, rainbows on the everywhere. on the walls. Wow, kind of imagining something similar could happen here. Yeah. I love that. And I think one thing to clarify in this confusing budget conversation um, is that site B is also current, you know, we're obviously trying to be as responsible with money as possible. It's currently included in our construction estimate. Um, this blue of, site B, right? The, the, yeah. That's the swarmy um, ceiling installation in a children's area. Yeah. yeah. And we've done some preliminary designs that that's based off of, which is what we showed, but that's also something that's that's up for conversation. So that mm -hmm. can stay in either pot. Mm -hmm. And Liz, another thing maybe to clarify is that all of the spots that are in orange mm -hmm. are, um, you know, we're just providing the infrastructure. If, if we decide that that's a good spot for rotating art, um, we just have, we're providing the infrastructure you can put art there in the future or not. 
right? It's a it's it's a flexible um, location. It'll look really nice even with it out art, I think, is the like if there's a pause between exhibits or it takes a while right. to get this process established. It's a really minimal kind of rail that I don't think anyone but now this group will notice if there's no art. Right. I'm excited about another orange area in the teen zone as well. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, it kind of creates a, a triangle of of opportunity there, you know, it where that changing art is distributed throughout. So it's fun. Oh, did, did we lose the screen? I think we did. Oh, no. What do people think oh, about okay. <laughs> the um, the large floating wall in the library. I mean, that was, in my mind, it was almost like the, the first site, but it may not be, you know, uh, just it's very prominent. It's a white wall. It, it would bring a lot of life to the space. It's kind of a, a linear element. I'm not sure what people think. Hey, Jim or Sheena, do you, how long is that wall? That that you're talking about, uh, e. Um, yeah, that sounds about right. Forty feet. Something, Something like, like that. that. Yeah. That wall is eighty-five feet. Eighty-five. Wait, no, that can't be. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a that's an oh, inch. Somehow my yeah, dimensioning yeah, is an inch. Eight hundred and eighty-five inches. It's one, one, two, one. three, four times fourteen. I can five times fourteen, so something that's like that. Yeah. Seventy okay. feet. But 71, you okay. Seventy-one feet. Yeah, yeah, seventy feet. Yeah. Hey, you should go back to that view. It's like yeah. So yeah. and it doesn't mean depending on the type of art. Yeah. It can yeah. also re still allow a lot of that wall to still be there. It's not like you have to populate the whole thing. There was some imagery too. You had that was pretty cool. Yeah. And the, yeah, we also in the past um, iterations of this wall have had a kind of a, an acoustic fabric wrapped panel coming all the way around on the upper portions of the walls all around the space, um, which doesn't we we uh, we don't strictly need it for our um, acoustic to, to like achieve what we're trying to achieve acoustically in this space. Um, but it it's also an opportunity an artist could, um, it could be something printed on fabric as, you know, or it could be something mounted directly to the, to drywall there. Diane, did you have your hand up? I actually love, um, I think it was Anita that said she, that, that projection, for the space and and the reason for that is that then because it's so visible in the library the um the staff can figure out throughout the year if they want to change it you know if they're doing special summer reading or maybe they have uh you know somebody in doing something that it's changeable and 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 a little more dynamic and i actually think that fits really well for the space um unless unless you needed it and it sounds like you didn't need it my other question was about uh, acoustics because then you could do something like one of the pictures that you have there but i like the idea that it could be a setup projection that's programmable and the staff could change it out depending on kind of what what's going on in the in the library or seasonal or something Yeah, that's always a challenge. I mean, if it's a static piece, it's always the managing of it, um, or if it's film, and and then it there's a large clear story window that, you know, for the most part's north but northwest facing. So it, whether how that works with projection, um, but yeah, that's interesting. Um. Can I, Chandra, did you, did you have any thoughts before we run out of time? I want yeah. To yeah, it's a little difficult to not have the uh, visual, mm -hmm. but I really like the idea of having a little different art in every place. I love the children's idea of the secret ceiling 
And I think to mirror that with the the tall skylights, mm. somehow with, with prisms or you know some kind of kinetic sculpture up there would be really nice to tie things together. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have my plans down here from previous meetings, so my remembrance of exactly where things are in a library is a little rusty, <laughs> but I, I really do like the ideas that are coming through here, and I think to use some of the construction for the art is very wise. <laughs> And I agree with Anita that I think if there's any chance to install the waterworks for a possible water feature outside, that that's very important. Um, I would like to have, if Jason, if you can send me the, yeah. the hard copy of the slides, then I can give a little bit more feedback to the group. Yeah, I can do that. I'll have, we'll get a copy, I'll print it out, and I can drop it off. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anita, I see your hand up. Yeah, I'm just staring at this thing, and I keep thinking, mm -hmm. maybe not something too busy. Maybe this isn't the mm -hmm. right place for a, a electronic uh, display that changes, but mm -hmm. maybe something more serene. I'm just trying to get a feel for what mood we want to create, since this is an early impact in a sense of how mm -hmm. someone feels in this library. Do we mm -hmm. want something that's simple and serene or do we want something that's asymmetrical or something that's, mm, I don't know, Frank Lloyd Wright or Japanese aesthetic or something that really mm -hmm. makes a mood? Just wondering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That second, the middle um, image on this, uh, uh, on this slide is is really um, I think interesting in the context of this location because it you know it has um, it's very dynamic in terms of how the light bounces off of off of these different textures right but it's not um, loud as you were saying sort of uh, yeah. colorful and something that's gonna really be distracting to the rest of the the space right right sort of understated yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm just watching the clock. We have five minutes left. Obviously, um, this conversation is ongoing and we will share the slides, Jason, um, so everybody can review um, and we can, we have your notes. I think we have your notes from this kind of summary conversation and that's great um, for launching into the next meeting. I just wanted to briefly touch on next steps in terms of project um, related milestones. And then um, Jason, I don't know if you have a sense of when we meet again um, with this group. Not yet. I mean, off the cuff, I'm thinking maybe in, you know, three weeks to a month, uh, maybe we reconvene um give everybody some time to think about it i think you know something that might be helpful for us is taking some time to look at the sites mm -hmm. and i would really like to prioritize just because you know we do have a limited budget and i want to make sure that as a group we're we're understanding you know what those maybe top three or four sites are mm -hmm. and you know if we can say that a certain site maybe is eliminated and not have to focus on that and then really just focus those conversations more on the the areas that we're really um mm -hmm. interested in um mm -hmm. would be great and i think that's something we could use that downtime between meetings to if you can help us with that mm -hmm. um determine that yeah that sounds great and i feel like we we heard um some comments around themes so i think we can maybe Think about that piece again too um, in relationship to those sites. And then Sina and Jason, in terms of overall schedule for this group, right? Mm -hmm. And when I think we want to work back from when that call for artists wants to go out, right? Because mm -hmm. that's that's when that's our deadline for for this one. Mm -hmm. um, but we've got some time, I think. Um, it could probably go out sometime towards the end of the year. 
because my yeah. understanding construction starts in October and that would give time for installation the following year. Yeah, yeah you I'm, might want to move that up a little bit and do it towards the end of summer just because okay. if con once construction starts, if there's, you kind of want to have your art picked before that in case there's some you come up with some specific that's a good change you might need to elements make. Yeah, sometimes yeah, there's lining or yeah, backing so you material wanna, you want to you know, yeah you might want to have it before yeah. that the call to artists like late summer or something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i think it's kind of up to us when to send that out once we get um approval on the overall project to to move forward because uh in my mind i don't want to mm -hmm. send them a call until we know that um we're going to build it and what budget we're going to build it for so um but that should come up well before um uh the summer right. so hoping to know that sooner than later okay That sounds great. Um, yeah, we'll share the slides. We'll share our minutes kind of summarizing the conversation. And then if we all think about prioritization and, and the development of a theme, I think that will give us a lot to talk about next time. Yeah, so I'll reach out to everybody okay. um, and set up the next meeting, but it'll probably be in May at some point. Okay. That sounds great. Um, thank you all. This was a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to the next one. Any last thoughts before we uh, 